you know, too, I, I think the di- difference in generations as far as, um, you, you know, when you went in was probably like, you know, maybe one of the kind of the tail end of getting those OG guys who maybe were involved in some like heavy shit and them, you know, them guys still being around. And now you got these guys, uh, these young kids, they they don't have that. I mean, you know, they're they're. Their uncle or their dad, they're probably, you know, were on drugs. They they never even seen combat or kind of like that wasn't part of their circle. Where back in the day, you knew everybody knew somebody whose family was in the military. You know, that's kind of like everybody grew up. But we're kind of like I would say almost two generations removed from that because of, um, you know, it's it's, it's not as heavy. And then, um, it you know, it, it's the mentality of a lot of young men now and. The, the gung-ho, like, really defending your country. People slam this country, and um, they, uh, you know, have a lot to say, but these same people, I see it, like, they're not really getting any plane tickets or expatriating to go to, you know, these places that they're, you know, so-called think that's better than the United States. And I'm not saying we're not with our own problems, but, like you said, go over there and uh, be, you say, hey, I'm going to claim, um, you know, whatever, American, and then see how different it is, like, you know, especially when people don't understand, like, the the, the Sunnis and, and the Kurds and just how they go at it and then how serious it is over here. You protest, walk around, you know, go drink your little Kool-Aid, Starbucks, go home, put your little stuff in your car. Over there, somebody come to your house, they're kicking your door in at night. Dude, you're getting drug out. They got you on camera protesting. You're getting effed up, man. It ain't no these yeah, little buddy. these little patsies over here with the colored hair and they're they're talking and being all crazy, bro. They will smash you over there. You go try that shit in Egypt. Go try that shit in Saudi Arabia. Go try that shit in um, uh, Morocco. Any of those places you think is all cool, Uganda. You know, play, they're not playing, bro. They're not playing. Those over they they are serious about it. And to be able to speak out, we take it for granted. And even hear the the censoring, but over there. You know, you've seen it. it's just a lot more serious, man. I mean, dude, it's it's nothing for having, you know, public display of uh, disobedience. You know, we're going to show you what we do to you guys who want to play these games. You know, I mean, you've seen it over there. It's it's a lot different. Yeah, I mean, they uh, they don't play around when it comes down. <clears throat> I saw some riots go down in Baghdad around that whole uh, around that whole time frame of 2019, and. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like automatic weapons fire in the streets. I mean, there's not, they're not just gonna come let you take over a police station. I mean, yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah, not. not yeah, yeah. hell no, hell no. But it's interesting because I, I think both of us have assessed that a, you know, you talked about it in your channel a lot. Like, I'm curious as to where the pendulum is because I think there's a heavy-handed. You talk about hey, like I, everybody, you've said it before. Everybody that thinks they got away, you're on camera these these facial recognition algorithms you know sooner or later they're gonna sick the dogs on all that data and the dog is just some ai program that's gonna be like oh yep that's tom smith you know that's fucking james Corey, whatever the fuck you know like that's that's all these people and 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 you said it yourself like uh i mean they may get notices at the door or they may get the goon squad at the door you know um I think a lot of what is going on these days is to push for a greater and more militant like police force. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah I it's, agree. Like, it's a Hegelian dialectic, you know, how, how you do it is you get, you get people that nobody wants to agree with. And by nobody, I mean like the majority, like the majority of people are in America. I'm not going to say are as well read as we are, but I mean, they're mostly good people. They're not the blue hairs. That's actually like a, a small portion of the people, you know. So you get you get those people, the weirdos, to, to scream to to defund the police, right? And so then all the normies are like, "Well, wait a minute." Like, well, it's like a it's like a Br'er Rabbit kind of thing. Like they're like, "Oh, well, all the commies and the blue hairs and everything, they're all screaming for the police to be disbanded, and they're burning shit down." So in the mind of the normie, they're like, well, if we disband the police, I, I can't do anything to personally protect anything, even though the only reason you can't is because of the police. And they're like, well, we must just need more police. It's like, well, okay, cool, man. So basically what's going to happen is 
well, my assessment is, you know, this this violence continues to ramp up. I think it's going to get worse. I don't think we've seen the, the peak of it yet, you know. Um, and then people will say enough is enough, and the backlash will come, and they'll be like, oh, well, okay, look, now we have, like, battalions of cops, you know, or or cameras everywhere, or, you know, robot sensors or some shit. Basically, basically something to the effect of... Uh, like a RoboCop style clamp down, you know. You know, though they played with that a little bit during the Rodney King riots. Remember, they kind of seen when they had the National Guard coming to L.A. and they they seen like what would happen if we let these guys kind of like run. But it was a different caliber of person. It wasn't like Antifa and BLM like Minnesota or in Seattle. These were street guys who were just fed up, and you seen how that ended with. You know, the Koreans taking up arms, the, you know, National Guard coming in, the reserves, all this stuff to shut it down. And, um, you know, a lot of these people aren't even old enough to see, uh, you know, or know about the history of the Watts riots where they had the riots with the police in L.A. was on fire. I mean, dude, there's been some serious shit, but a lot of history nobody talks about. And, And like the older people who had a lot of that game, they're not really given the platform to share that to kind of lace you. Because if you knew how this shit all plays out, these youngsters running around thinking it's a free for all would maybe be thinking twice because, you know, you're thinking you're free and clear and uh, this is just the new norm. And I look at like they do these studies almost like they do in the penitentiary where they see, you know, how many of different demographics they could put in here or what they'll let do is get away with the cell phones, the drugs and all this stuff until shit, you know, until it, what, what, what kicks off a, uh, uh, almost like a, like, a ignites a situation. And in California, they're playing with that with different cities. But I tell you right now, you'll see it in Frisco, but you go to Carmel Monterey, bro, ain't none of that shit. None of that shit. You go to Carmel. I went to Carmel during COVID Monterey, bro. With no crime, ain't nobody ever getting robbed in Carmel. Yeah. Bro, they didn't even have masks there. Nobody was wearing masks when I went to the Car- the Pebble Beach. They had a machine, and we walked past this machine, and my wife was like, what is that? Dude, they had a, a, a police officer there. That thing seen everything. It seen through your bags. They didn't even look in your bag because, you know, you're bringing in your, your picnic stuff. Dude, you better not. These are the richest people in the world. And they had cars there with no, you know, unlimited value. No, they couldn't even put a value on them. And all these people came into Monterey. There was none of that. So even in the Bay, they have it to where Frisco, San Jose, Oakland, you know, whatever little towns around there. But, dude, you go anywhere into that other pocket, you're done. And and then there's a, little, a few places in Southern California where they're trying to, but Southern California is such a shit show. But, yeah, man, and they experiment with it, man. And like you said, when they do decide to flex a muscle and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, exercise whatever new uh, plan that, you know, it's, you know, Simicon, Simicon Valley decides to put down, it's not going to be any joke. But like you said, RoboCop, they're going to have some dude walking around and you're going to be like, what the hell is this? And then they're going to be crying. You know what I mean? Kids going to be crying and complaining and be like, oh, shit, my little baby, he wasn't that bad. Well, your baby, man, it's like RoboCop. This guy has 30 different accounts. So blah, blah, you know what I mean? They just yeah. they have all your shit right there on a digital screen. You're under arrest. You're looking at 30, 40 years. You're like, what? You try to run? Bro, they're going to snatch your ass up. What do you think about the idea that, uh, you know, I think at the upper level of humanity, like people are just like human farmers, you know, like we, we basically live on a tax farm. Everybody's nation is like an, uh, its own little individually flavored tax farm. And so it almost looks like they're, they're continually coming out with scams to, to, to make more money off the population. And unfortunately in our country, we're super fond of for-profit prisons, which I'm like, I don't even know how that's a legal thing to have in a, in a so-called like free country. Right. But so, you know, the prison industrial complex is probably going to reap the benefit of this backlash, right? And so it, would it be the prison industrial complex that would do things like uh, or the owners thereof, which is, you know, like BlackRock, Vanguard, you know, would it 
wouldn't it be better for them to push in people that like don't prosecute, you know, like, Hey, Oh, Hey, uh, let's pass a law where you're allowed to, to steal a thousand dollars worth of shit. You know, knowing that the backlash is coming and the, and your for-profit prison is now going to get filled with, you know, thousands of people probably to the overflowing. So they can be like, well, what do we need? More prisons, you know? Um, well, it's funny you say like- that because even when you think about the immigrant crime, all right, you, they, they allow these assholes to empty their prisons in these foreign countries, plane tickets over here, march through Mexico. If you notice, they're not stopping in Mexico. Mexico's not stopping any of these people, man. And they, no. they're not, bro, they're m- making their way right up over here. So like you said, you, you're talking about like, uh, you know, whether it's uh, Venezuela, El Salvador, Chile, Brazil, Uganda, different places. You guys coming over here doing that same shit? Well, eventually, if you get caught up, we got a super prison, and all you guys will be doing labor for us. So we're going to have you building maybe microchips for the next iPhone. Maybe you're going to be working somehow contracted through Intel. Maybe, uh, dude, there's a whole big game plan. And like you said, it's that movie with uh, Matt Damon where he's working on the island. Remember, he had to go check in, and he's down here, and these people are living up. I don't know if it was bars or something. Remember, and the rich people, and they had yeah. a time, and they had all this time, and you're down here slaving, and they got time police. You're going to be you know, down here slaving, and these people will be over here, and literally it's going to be extreme rich, and then these people over here who are worshiping these people, and then every, you know, the little bit in between that are just, like you said, treading water, doing this, yeah. swimming, trying to get something. But they're really shifting – an economic force here. And I have a feeling those people are going to replace certain people in prison for bed space because what are the geo is, you know, one of the top stocks. My buddy told me the other day, said, dude, you know, get into the stock game. He said, one of my best performance stocks when I got it, it was like, you know, $5, $4. Now it's at $14, man, you know, the prison stock. And they got contracts for all type of military shit. And they're going to need people. And like you said, if they let out certain people to rouse up more people, to get them to commit more crimes, it, it funnels into the whole the whole uh, uh, pipeline. Because if nobody's doing it, we, we need to stir the pot up. And yeah. this is all by design. So these guys run around. They let out some of these guys. You know they ain't been vetted. These, these guys are just career criminals. But they go back to the hood. Get this dude, get this dude, get this. They start, you know what I mean? And they create with street crime and they just let it keep going. And like, yeah, man, just keep stealing this still. They're organizing. And so, like you said, it's all by design, man. Psychologically, you maybe wouldn't have even went into Sephora and stole $900 worth of stuff. But now, instead of going to college, you're doing this on a side hustle, thinking it's cool, walking in there, leaving. You're like, man, this is cool. You know, you got all the shit. But then when you get your degree and you... Hey, Mr. Mr. Thomas, um, what are you talking about? Yeah, I work for um, I work for so and so. Well, you know, back in the day, you robbed Sephora like twenty times. Well, it was under nine hundred fifty dollars. It was legal, you know. No, Mr. Thomas, we added that up, and it added up to this amount. This right here carries this amount of time. You're going with us, buddy. Yeah. Dude, this shit is gonna. It's gangster what they're doing. It's fucking well thought out for sure. Yeah, and I was thinking about this earlier before we got on. Uh, and I was going to maybe ask you about it is because we talked about it a little bit before on one of the other shows we did where, um, you know, getting the bag off of all this bullshit. So I was kind of contemplating this myself and I, I pretty much took a, most of my shit out of the stock market um, for like actual physical assets, you know. But uh, where do you think the morality falls knowing what we know about how this shit works, buying things like Raytheon stock? That geo stock you're talking about, like uh, Anduril. Anduril is a is an AI weapons company. A- anybody out there with a couple of coins to run, rub together? I'm not a financial ab- advisor, but I know who buys what weapons. You may want to look at Anduril. You know, um, and the only thing that's really prevented me from doing it so far is like, okay, so I run my mouth all the time about trying to f- be a more correct and moral society, and like, like you know, fix myself, fix my family, try to fix the world. You know, and I'm like, if, if I, if I got money riding with Lockheed, cause I know they're about to get paid, you know, like if this war goes to the hot in the middle East, 
people are going to get paid, you know? So, so where do you, what do you think about that? Like, uh, as far as like making, making some change off of it. Cody, man, to be honest with you, bro, make the change, bro. It, 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 it's not, I'll tell you right now, yeah. man. And, and I talk with this about my business partner a lot and, you know, you can, you know, be riled up and make America do all this stuff, dude. It's not going to happen. Your reality and what you want to happen, the fact that you have this knowledge, which a lot of people will never comprehend and cannot see it. It's like even when I was in prison and I was in there looking at these guys, I'm going coming from the law library. I've been studying for like three hours and I come back and these guys are watching Telemundo. These guys are watching BET over here. Maybe they're watching Frasier or Seinfeld. And I'm looking like, wow, man, no, and you know, nobody's fighting to get out of prison. Nobody's looking up their case. There's guys there who might have got falsely prosecuted for a gun. Maybe they had, uh, you know, they you know, they violated the uh, a constitutional right. You know what, man, dude, you can't help. You, you got to get it. Your family putting them in a better position. Do that. Put yourself in the best position possible. But you cannot bring everybody with you, bro. I do my best to try to put out good game, help people. And, you know, and I'm going to continue to put out a positive voice. But, dude, sometimes I get drained and I'm like, dude, who's picking me up? Who's who's helping me, you know, get the next game and and, and, and elevate? They don't care. Nobody cares. Half the people you're trying to help, you can tell them something and their business is going to fail regardless because they're not going to listen. These yeah. people, a lot of them don't want to hear it. You could tell them. You could say this. And like I said, I'm not trying to. I've ate oatmeal and, and peanut butter, powdered milk. You've done the same. You've sat there, put water on shit. You know, top ramen, let it sit for, you know, 30 minutes and some water and it's still hard. You're crunching. Dude, I've done all that. I'm tired of that shit. And I'm not going to do that shit again. And I'm not trying to make somebody be where I'm at mentally or spiritually. My thing is now help me get the game so I can prepare and take care of my family. And I'm not going to stress off of the matrix and what it's doing because I can't change. I can't stop Syria. I can't stop fucking uh ukraine i can't stop iran and, and israel i can't i can't do nothing about it all we can do is be informed so we can make better choices and so we're not just running around doo -doo -doo and not taking advantage of money opportunities because the great thing about the opportunities you just mentioned is you don't have to be a rich guy you don't have to be in if you just know these things you can just put it in there and eventually you'll get a dividend yeah you know what I mean? You ain't got to work for the company. You ain't got to be on their, their their board of executives. All you got to do is know how to make these moves and take advantage of it, man. I mean, you know, everybody's thinking, oh, man, look, this matrix, just like in a movie. Remember in the movie, right when it, you know, oh, Neil's going to destroy all the agents. Bro, it just reset itself. Yeah. It's not going to stop, bro. We're, they're going to reset. Of course, Cody, it's not like you're going to be running down the street like, man, it's not going to happen, bro. It's going to be people making money. They're still going to be doing F1 five years from now. They'll have another Lakers star. They're going to have another, you know, Olympics. Dude, it's not stopping. Even during war, Hitler was at the Olympics tripping on fucking meth. You know what I mean? So, dude, it doesn't stop. So for people to be fear-mongering and, oh, man, the war in the street, look, man, when shit gets serious, they're going to start popping these damn illegals who are uh, committing these crimes, literally taking it into their own hands, and it's going to be street justice. Yeah. People are going to get fed up and dude, it's, it's not going to, the, the, what's going on with the woke left and all this stuff is already swinging back. And you can already see people in New York taking uh crime. I seen a lady chasing a pervert, spraying it with mace. People about to beat this dude up because he's, you know, doing stuff on the trains. Dude, people are fed up. So, you know, the only, I look at it like figure out ways that you can see something before it happens. I don't care if you're investing in a, uh, a company that specializes in coffins or building bomb, whatever, bro, yeah. be smart about it. Cause we can't stop it, but I'm not yeah. going to sit here and not, you know, if I can take advantage of an opportunity, not be able to make a little couple, couple little, you know, a little bit of change off of it, you know, and um, be smart about it, man. Morally, bro, you know, your heart's at, you're not out here. You're, you're not like in Congress pushing the, the war machine. You know, you've seen it already. You, you are, educating others so that they can see the big picture but a lot of people are just going to be in their 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 program bro and they're not gonna 
they're not going to listen anyways, man. So do what you can do for your family. And, bro, I'm going to ride your coattail on any game I can get because I, I'm, I'm trying to be on one of those beaches too. I'm Like I said, I want us to be on – what is it that show with the yacht show where they rent the yacht out and they're kicking it for 30 grand a week, you know? Damn, um, sounds good though. <laughs> you know, so I, I'm, I'm trying to like, dude, I don't want to be in the rat race. And the only way to get out of it is to know uh, the opportunities presented in the financial market. But yeah. All right. I'm going to go get some Lockheed right after this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you shouldn't feel, I don't think you should feel guilty. You know, I, I you know, the people who say that you, you, oh man, blah, blah, blah. Like, look, man, you know, you've been through what you've been through and you made it out, which some people didn't make it out. You've seen things firsthand. You've experienced a certain part of life. And now you're, you know, doing your thing on your homestead. And like I said, if you're able to, you know, capitalize on something, it ain't like you're out here building a prison. You know, dude, we can't stop fucking the prison stock market. We can't. Right. You know, I felt stupid being in there. All the products you got Keefe, which is George Bush. He's he's a big contractor for the prisons. You have Bob Barker. He does like a lot of the toothpaste, the hygiene items. He's making a shit ton of money. I've heard that there's some other athletes and people who are invested in prisons. Dude, it's it's secure investment. It ain't going nowhere. They're not they're not destroying these prisons. They're building more, you know, and the mentality of a lot of these people now think about why they're letting these guys get cell phone videos and stuff, because they want people to think like, hey, man, it's not that bad in there. You can dance. You got your cell phone. You you know you got McDonald's sometimes from the guards, dude. That's all by design. That's yeah. another program. You know, guy asked me today. He said, "Man, how they get a smartphone in there, dude? You you know that they they don't know where that iPhone message came from. What prison? That's all programming. These youngsters are basically looking. They're gonna be in there happy. Yeah. This trip, man. It is. Visit BigHurt916.com to pick up a limited edition GTA poster signed by me for $10 or with your purchase of a Wig Splitter Porsche t-shirt, I'll throw in a free poster signed by me for you. Don't forget to stop by the Big Herc 916 store and pick up a sticker for your car or a patch or a sticker for your laptop or maybe a beanie or read one of the many books that Big Herc 916 has authored. You know how we do it. Oh shit, the popos are coming. I gotta hurry up and wash my ass. Go to BigHerc916.com, pick you up a bar of soap, and wash your ass, or else you're gonna be under arrest too. Oh shit. <laughs>